Welcome to Novelist Spotlight. This is Mike Consul, your host. In addition to being the host of this podcast and interviewing novelists, I am a novelist myself. I have two published novels. I hope you will buy them. I hope you will read them. And I hope you will thoroughly enjoy them. My latest is titled Family Recipes, a novel about Italian culture, Catholic guilt, and the culinary crime of the century. My previous novel is titled Hardwood, a novel about college basketball and other games young men play. And that story deals with issues ranging from depression and racism to sex, religion, and university politics. Both of those novels are listed in the episode notes. Now, on with our program. Have you seen the movie White Noise yet? I've been waiting since 1985 for this film to get made. And I I would warn you not to confuse it with the white noise that was made in 2005 starring Michael Keaton. Completely different film. This is a new one made by Noah Baumbach and starring his wife, co-starring his wife, Greta Gerwig. And let me give you a little history before I tell you what I think about the movie. And that history goes back again to 1985. That's when Don DeLillo published White Noise. It got an effusive review from the New York Times book review. I read that book review. I decided I'm going to get my hands on a copy of this book. This is the novel that really brought Don DeLillo to, well, to the forefront. He had already done some terrific novels like End Zone and The Names, Ratner, Star, and so on. But it was White Noise, winner of the National Book Award, where he really came on the scene. And since then, he's written a whole bunch of other novels. Two of the most notable ones, I would say, is Libra, which is a reenactment, not a reenactment, but his telling, his fictionalization of the Lee Harvey Oswald story in the Kennedy assassination. Turns out he grew up in the same neighborhood as Lee Harvey Oswald. To his knowledge, he never met the man. I believe my retelling of this is correct, but was always fascinated by... The fact that um, their paths were so different, came from the name, same neighborhood and, and ended up living very different lives. The other one is Underworld, which critics raved about, a big book. And um, I've read most of Don DeLillo's stuff, almost all of his stuff. White Noise is my favorite novel ever. When I read it, honestly, the first time I read it, I stalled in it in, in chapter, probably chapter two put it back on the shelf. I picked it up weeks or maybe a couple months later, gave it another try and devoured it. It's been my favorite novel ever since. And ever since I've been wanting, I've been thinking to myself that some movie director is going to read this book and say, this has got to be made into a movie. Very hard to make into a movie. Clearly what needs to happen is that it be, how would I put it? That you just take one aspect of the novel, just one aspect of that novel and make that what the movie's all about because there's just too much going on there. I thought Robert Altman would be the guy, the great filmmaker, but then Robert Altman died and I thought White Noise is never going to get made. 39 years later, it finally hits the big screen the director, again, Noah Baumbach, and I don't know. I have to tell you that my wife was not a fan of the novel White Noise, but she said she was never bored by the movie. I wasn't bored by the movie, but when you have read White Noise and you love that book, the movie is able to give you so little of what that book contains. The other thing... I mean, what's really interesting is that Noah Baumbach read that book when he was in his teens. He came back to the book during COVID and read it then, and it lit lit him up, apparently. Probably it lit him up as a teenager. He loved it then. But to revisit the book at a time with COVID, and the book at, at a... At, 
space is really about the fear of death and what happened during COVID, especially when it first broke out. We didn't know what we were really dealing with. It didn't turn out to be as deadly as many of us had thought. And um, but nonetheless, it made us think about our mortality. It brought fear of death front and center. So Noah decides to make the movie. He was showing some ideas, I think some portions of the script to his wife, Greta Gerwig, one of my favorites. Greta, I say to people, is destined to become the female Woody Allen without the sexual peccadilloes, hopefully. And so she plays Babette, the wife of Jack Gladney, who is the main character, who's played by Adam Driver. Well, Noah, when he was sharing portions of the the script that he was working on with his wife, Greta, she was very encouraging about it. She had read the book. She said that she's a person who makes notes or does a lot of underlining in books. And she said line after line, she found herself underlining because that's the kind of book White Noise is. I mean, it didn't surprise me in the least that she said that because White Noise has so many stretches of just brilliant language, very odd characters. The thing about white noise is it puts you in a slightly altered state of reality or the story is something set slightly apart from reality. It's kind of otherworldly in that way. So how do you make an otherworldly style movie? Well, that's maybe the least of the the issues that faced Noah Baumbach because Lots of movies have been made that do create that otherworldly effect. 2001 A Space Odyssey comes to mind for me, one of my all-time favorite movies. But this was a huge challenge. And I will say that the movie that Noah made, and I'm a fan of, of Noah Baumbach, he's a great filmmaker, but the movie had a lot of, well, the dialogue was kind of brittle, It sounded contrived. It didn't work in a movie the way it worked in the book. It followed the book pretty closely. I mean, it only was able to get a fraction of the book onto the screen and uh, over the course of 90 minutes or so. But the portions of the book it did bring to the screen, it was very true to the dialogue in the book. It just doesn't come off the same way. He wouldn't expect it to, and I'm sure that Noah wasn't trying to do that. He probably realized movies are different than books. You don't try to replicate, but the movie to me was very odd. It was odd the way the characters spoke to one another in ways that were was very robotic, plastic, brittle, which was not the case. I didn't feel that at all when I was reading the book. Now, I would recommend you go see the movie. It's worth going to see for sure. I certainly would recommend that you read the novel. It's one of the great novels that's been written. And it's the kind of novel that um, is, is assigned to students in English lit classes. They called this book unfilmable. That's the thing, is that they called this book unfilmable. I understand why, but I thought that if it could be done in snippets... Or, really, as I said earlier, just take one aspect of that book, and that wouldn't have been easy (laughs) either. So what Noah said is that, you know, even though the book was called Unfilmable, and he was interviewed about this, and uh, the interviewer said, you know, what suggested to you that this could be made into a film? And he said a lot of it had to do with timing and that the book had occupied a huge part of his consciousness from having read it when he was a teenager. I'm impressed that that he read it when he was a teenager, but not surprised, but impressed. Not the kind of book that I think most teenagers would have the, the wherewithal, the frame of reference, the intellect to really absorb it. There's still so much development going on when you're a teenager, but he had, um, hadn't read that for some time. He read other Don DeLillo books. So he starts reading White Noise again. And at the end of uh, 2019, beginning of 2020, was that time frame. And uh, he found himself actually finishing it 
right as the pandemic arrived. If you know anything about the book White Noise, there's the airborne toxic event. It's, it's the central event of the novel. And then here is Noah reading the book for the second time. Then comes the pandemic. The pandemic is, the COVID-19 pandemic is Don DeLillo territory. You would expect that that would be Don, Don DeLillo territory. It's big, it's global. It has to do with death, the fear of death. It has to do with, in a way it's egalitarianism because everybody was subject to the same thing regardless of your station in life. And so Noah said, I felt like it represented how I felt, sort of how confused and fearful he felt, like we all did. So Noah tried to create what he called a cinematic analog to what DeLillo had done on the page in, in a literary way. You heard me say that there's something otherworldly about the book, the, 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 the book, the characters, that whole story. Well, Greta Gerwig said, in, in her estimation, she said something heightened and somewhat surreal and sort of floating above the earth about the entire dialogue, not just the dialogue, but the entire world that he builds, which feels adjacent to our world, but not exactly our world. And I think she put it very well when she said that. So set alongside the book, I think White Noise, the movie, was a disappointment in that regard, but I do encourage you to see it. Certainly read the book, see the movie. As I said, my wife was never bored at any point uh, during it, even though the, the novel didn't speak to her in the way it spoke to me. And I'll tell you something about the novel that happened with me, and that is that I remember calling my college roommate, who's a big reader, and we always ask each other what we're reading. And I told him that I was reading White Noise, and I said, I think it's the best effing novel I've ever read. And a few weeks later, I got a phone call from him, and he said, are you the one who told me that I should read White Noise? And I said, yeah. And I said, what did you think? And he said, it's the best effing novel I've ever read. And to this day, my college roommate feels as I do. It's the, the best uh, piece of literature um, he's ever read. And interestingly, the book is hysterically funny, but it's not. But that's lost on a lot of people. I certainly lost on some people. Maybe I shouldn't say a lot of people. Because it's not punchline humor, which is which is a cheap way to get a laugh. The comedy of the book, what makes the book comedic, is embedded within the characters and the dialogue. And even if you find a character not to be amusing or funny or, or a stretch of dialogue not to be funny, the dialogue doesn't fall flat because it's telling you something. It's meaningful anyway. And the, again, the comedy is, is, is embedded within it. It's innate to the person or the content, the conversation that's being had. So as an example, my college roommate later told me that he was seeing a therapist at the time. He goes in to see his therapist. His therapist is reading White Noise. Not at his suggestion. She just happened to be reading White Noise. He had given it to a friend. And when he followed up with the friend and asked him what he thought, he said, great book, great novel. And, and my old college roommate said, wasn't it hysterical? And he gave him a quizzical look and said, no, not, not funny. It wasn't funny, but it was a great, great uh, novel. So he didn't see, and it's not because he's not intelligent. I'm not suggesting people who don't find the comedy in it aren't intelligent or don't have the moxie. I'm simply saying that that aspect of the novel isn't there for everybody. And yet, even if it isn't there, it's still a great novel and... It obviously was not lost on Noah. It wasn't lost on Greta. 
and they went out there and they made the movie. I'm glad they did. I would see it again. It's never going to live up to the book, of course. And I'm sure Noah wouldn't say he thought it was going to live up to the book or to exceed what the book had had uh, achieved. But here, 39 years later, he makes the movie. It's a movie that just needed to be made. It really is. If you If you know and love White Noise, it would have been a travesty for it never to come to the screen. It's done that now. I wouldn't be surprised if someday somebody makes a second run at it and does it in a very different way. In the meantime, we've got it. We've got the book, the great novel by Don DeLillo. We've got the movie by the great Noah Baumbach and his wife Greta Gerwig. Adam Driver's in there. Don Cheadle is in there. And it's it's a great ride. It's a great ride. It's just that when you juxtapose it with the novel, come on. That's a gigantic ask. That's all I got for now. For a novelist spotlight, I'm my console.